Uh, the time is 7:10, and I'm uh, going to call this Macomb Township Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Um, my name is Aaron Tuckfield, and the date is September 3rd, 2020. Uh, the first order of our meeting after calling the meeting to order is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to call that out. If you can uh, mute yourselves, if you'd like to say it out loud or, or leave me to say it by myself, um, because we're in a audio session. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pledge having been completed, we're going to move on to the roll call. We're going to continue uh, with our uh, procedure for roll call this evening. I'll be calling uh, all the roll calls uh, to, keep, uh, to keep continuity going. Uh, Ms. Lawson. Here. Mr. DeCoster. Here. Mr. Piper. Here. Ms. Posey. Here. And Mr. Tuckfield is present. Uh, that means we have a quorum and we are all here. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different next. This is not on the agenda, but I want to make sure that um, uh, for uh, everyone listening in, they're able to understand who's here. We have several, several uh, township staff uh, on the line, and I'm just going to call on them uh, by name uh, to introduce them, their name and what department or, or area of their the township they're in. Uh, and this is to try to help all of our general public uh, know, who, uh, know who's on the line tonight. So first, uh, Ryan, could you uh, introduce yourself and your department? Yes, I'm Ryan Miller. I work for the IT department in Macomb Township. Very good. Thank you, Ryan. And then Josh. Hi, I am Josh Box, the planning director for Macomb Township. Very good. And then we've got Tom on the line. Tom? Tom Massorti, general counsel. Very good, Tom. Uh, we also have Joe Maples on the line. Joe Maples, building department. Very good, and that's uh, that's our staff tonight. We're we're happy to have everybody uh, happy happy to have everybody on board. Uh, next item uh, is item four. This is the approval of agenda items. Uh, do we have any discussion on the agenda items or motions to approve it? Chairman Tuckfield, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. This is uh, Posey. Motion by Ms. Posey to approve the agenda as presented. Is there support? Mr. Piper, I'll support that. Um, uh, motion by Ms. Posey, support by Mr. Piper to approve the agenda as presented. And uh, I'm going to call the roll. Ms. Posey. Yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. That motion passes unanimously and the agenda is adopted. Next item is the approval of the previous meeting minutes. This would be the minutes for our August 6th, 2020 meeting. Is there any comments or corrections for the minutes? This is DeCoster, I do have a couple. Okay. Um, I believe after page one, there's an incorrect date at the top. It says Thursday, July 2nd in the header for the yep. rest of the document. Yep. And then, Unfortunately, I believe the last meeting got out significantly later than 7.52. I think we adjourned. I think it should have been 8.52. That sounds about right. It was a long meeting. Okay. Any other corrections on there, Mr. DeCoster? Not until I hear. Okay. Uh, any other corrections or comments on the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion uh, to approve the minutes uh, as agended and specifically the corrections were to correct the date uh, on the page, pages two through the end, whatever the final page number is, and to verify and correct the time of the meeting adjournment as we believe it was uh, probably a different time, 8.52 is rather, as opposed to 7.52. Is there a motion to approve those amended minutes? Uh, yes, uh, this is member Slauson. I motion to approve. Motion by Slauson, is there support? Mr. DeCoster, I'll, I'll support that. We have a motion by Slauson, support by Mr. DeCoster, and I will call the roll. Ms. Slauson? Yes. Mr. DeCoster? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Uh, Piper? Yes. Ms. Posey? Yes. 
That would be five yes votes. Okay. That moves us on to new business, 6A. The first uh, item of, of new business is a variance request from the zoning ordinance, uh, section 20-7A. Um, and I believe there's actually a second portion of the ordinance, or maybe the, the same number, but there's two requests on this. Um, this is for uh, property at 23401 23 Mile Road, permanent parcel 08133000025, Ascension Lutheran Church Petitioner. Uh, Mr. Box, could you take us through this request, please? Sure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tuckfield. Uh, they are, as you mentioned, located uh, along 23 Mile, uh, about a quarter mile east of North Avenue in Section 13. Uh, and you're correct, there are two different items that they are uh, seeking a variance for tonight. Um, the first being uh, with regards to uh, this the size of the sign and the second being with regards to the location of the sign. Um, they have a sign out front when 23 mile was widened uh, a year or so ago. Uh, it made that a non-conforming sign uh, because the roadway was widened. It became too close for, you know, based on our ordinance uh, and they are now moving that back, but um, it's, they're not moving it back far enough to Bring it back into compliance, but that's due to uh, some restrictions on what you know their parking lot, which is existing, and some other things on their property. Uh, and then, as far as the size of the sign, uh, they for the electronic portion, uh, they are allowed 20 square feet. Uh, the sign itself, I believe, is actually smaller, going to be smaller than uh, the existing sign based on what they're proposing. But the 20 square feet portion of the electronic part uh, will they're asking for 21 square feet as they the sign comes in in 12 inch by 12 inch pieces of the screen so in order for them to get it to 20 square feet it the screen wouldn't be a, a, a proper shape for a electronic screen they would actually have to remove three square feet not one so they are seeking a second variance for that very good. Is there any questions for Mr. Box from the board? Hearing none, I'm going to go to the petitioner. I believe we have a, one of the, the members of the petitioner's um, body, the, the church body, uh, in the audience. Uh, I don't know if there is more um, individuals who need to speak on this, and I'm sorry, I, I think his name was Mark, but if you could, sir, identify yourself uh, for the record and, and give any comments on this you might have. Sure, my name is Mark Kukan, and I am the uh, church secretary. Um, I think Mr. Box explained what, what the two variances were. I can uh, attempt to answer any questions that anyone may have. Very good, is there anyone from the board who has a question uh, for Mike here? Mark, pardon me, Mark. Uh, hearing none, I did have a question. Um, uh, Mr. Box indicated uh, that uh, it would be difficult um, to modify the size of the sign because of the, of the panels. Um, in, in one of the uh, ordinances and I, I, or variances, I guess we're kind of looking at both of them together here, um, you indicated that you were uh, looking to shorten the width of the sign to maintain full compliance with the ordinance. Um, obviously, because of this being a percentage thing and not an actual square footage uh, issue that I believe you're having uh, problems with, um, if you left the sign at the uh, the original length, um, the, the percentage portion would not be the same issue. Can you just walk us through why uh, you would rather keep the sign shorter and, and force the screen out of, out of size? Is that something you've thought about? Is there a reason you want to keep it shorter? Or is it just uh, an attempt, to, or not an attempt, but uh, in an effort to, to make the uh, other variants as small as possible? Yes, that was, that was the thought, um, as well as it would increase cost if we increase the actual uh, electronic sign portion as well. So it would if if you kept the electric. Uh, so I guess I guess help me with that as well. How if if you kept the electronic sign the same and increased the the size of the overall sign? Oh, I I opened up your drawing and I'm answering my own question. It's because your screen is wider than the side of the sign. It's part of the design portion of it. 
I see. Yeah, I thought you meant take the screen out another, you know, two feet, which would so, obviously make it bigger. So if if the screen the screen restriction is is um, is restricted right now, I believe by square footage and by percentage. So if the overall size of the sign was bigger, the percentage I believe would would uh, would match up with the ordinance, if I remember the way this was working correctly. Mr. Box, help me out here. Was this was this uh, on percentage only or square footage that they were having an issue here? Well, it's square footage, but it, because it's based on percentage of the size of the overall sign. Of the overall sign, that's what's defining the square footage. Correct. Yeah. So you Mr. Are Tuckfield? The... Yes. Uh, my name is Timothy Muller. I'm owner of Curb Appeal Concepts. I'm the sign contractor. That there you came... go, Mr. Muller. If if you could, could you give your uh, could you give your address for the record as well? Certainly, it's four zero four zero Montgomery Drive, Shelby Township, four eight three one six. Okay. Uh, Part, the second part of our uh, variance request, the overall proposed sign came up to 72 square feet and you allow 40% of that to be the sign area for the LED, which would bring it at a 28.8 square feet, but the ordinance only allows for 20 square foot maximum. Because it's of the actually, tile. It's actually the reverse of what I'm saying. The sign size in theory should allow a larger square footage by percentage, but we have it capped right. at 20. Correct. So, but with, by following your ordinance, we are only being allowed 20 total square feet instead of the 20, just under 29 square feet if you went by a percentage. So, I what, got we're, it. what we're asking to do is um, because of the tile situation and the way it lays out, we're asking for it's actually the 20.67 square feet of LED message board, which would be 0.67 square feet over your. Uh, maximum 20 square feet. That's under the item two that we're asking for the variance. And you may have this written in your application, but what percentage of the overall sign does that put it at? Um, if, if you have that in front of you. Bear with me one second. Um, I think it's 40%, Aaron. Is it? I don't have the overall. I don't have the overall sign size in front of me. Seventy-two square foot sign. And forty percent of it is allowed to be the message board, which is right. twenty-eight point eight feet. And right. But we're only we're only asking for twenty point six seven is what we came in. Correct. At. I think Correct. it's it's about twenty-eight and a half percent. Right. Okay. Twenty-eight point seven one. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for all those doing the maths for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Um, Mr. Muller and Mark, I appreciate it. Uh, that was that was my questions. Uh, any other questions from the board for the petitioner? Hearing none, I'm going to open this up to the public. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? If you uh, wish to do so, please uh, raise your hand digitally by hitting star nine, or if you're on the app, hitting hit the hand that's in the app that says uh, raise my hand. And I'm not seeing any, um, so I'm going to close the public portion and bring it back to the board. Uh, does anyone on the board have any further questions or comments on this issue? Um, Aaron, I'd just like to take it, uh, you know, just make a comment that uh, Ascension Church has worked with the clerk's department and allowing us to utilize their church uh, for a polling location as well. And it is a difficult um, area to find with the current signage. So I, I think this it overall would help in many different ways. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Posey. Uh, any other yep. questions? Any other questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, I will open it up for motions. Are there any motions on? We're going to take these one at a time. The first would be uh, on the variance request for allowing the ground sign in the right of way. Is there a motion uh, on that uh, variance request? Chairman Tuckfield, I will make a motion to approve a variance allowing for sign installation within the 10 foot setback from 23 mile road based on the uh, planning recommendation that a practical dif difficulty does exist. Very good. Um, support by 
Very good. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. Mr. Box, do we need to define the distance or is that sufficient to be able to, 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 uh, to word it in that way? Um, you probably should define the distance, which I believe is, is listed on their application. Okay. Ten, um, 10 feet to the right of way. It's 10 feet setback from the right of way. I thought it was less than that. 10 feet is what they're supposed to have. The ordinance is I think it'll be five feet. Yeah. Are you okay amending your motion to that effect, uh, Ms. Posey and, and Ms. Lawson? Yeah, you want it to include uh, five, uh, five feet from the right away? Yeah, just so we specify how much we're, how, what, what type of variance we're giving. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine amending the motion accordingly. Okay, and Ms. Lawson, Support. you're okay with that? Support. Oh. Okay, very good. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, I'm going to call the roll. Ms. Posey? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Mr. DeCoster? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. That motion passes five to nothing, uh, and that variance is granted. Uh, is there any discussion on the second um, variance request. That will be with regards to the square footage for the uh, the video portion of the sign. Hearing no discussion, I'd, I'd ask, I'd, well, go ahead, Mr. Coster, but I'd, I'd uh, ask if there's any motions on this issue. I was going to make, I was going to make the motion, but. Go ahead. Okay. I will make a motion to grant the variance uh, to allow for um, the sign to be 21 square feet in size for the ordinance limits assigned to 20 square feet. Support by Slauson. Very good. We have a motion by Mr. DeCoster to grant the variance supported by Ms. Slauson. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, I'm going to bring that to a vote. Uh, Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. That motion passes five to nothing. Uh, that item has been passed and both variants have been granted. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, and uh, to the church, uh, Mark, thank you for the work you guys are doing out there. It's, it's, uh, it's noticeable the work you're putting into the property, and, and we appreciate you guys being uh, members of the township. Thank you, board members. Thank you. All right. Uh, that takes us to item B, 6B. This is a variance request from the zoning ordinance, uh, 10.0354, to allow an air conditioner in a front yard due to being a corner lot. Pardon me, yes, due to being a corner lot rather than in a rear yard as required uh, by the ordinance. This is located at 1, one. I had this address wrong on my notes yes, here. Yes, I noticed that. Sure right. <laughs> I get the correct address here. It should be 51379, Eric. Yep, 51379 quadrate, and that's permanent parcel 0818474001, Century Plastics, uh, CIE USA is the petitioner. Mr. Box, could you uh, take us through this, please? Sure. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman Tuckfield. Um, and to your comment about the incorrect address, um, I did confirm that it was advertised correctly. Very so, good. Thank you, Mr. Box. Um, as you mentioned, this uh, this property is located at the corner of Quadrate and Angelo Drives in Section 18. Uh, this is just north of 23 Mile um, near the future Garfield, uh, where that will go through. Uh, this property is as mentioned on a corner, uh, so it's kind of a double front yard. Um, additionally, they have a drive aisle immediately adjacent to what would be the west side of the building and a parking lot immediately adjacent to the north side of the building, uh, making it difficult to locate a air conditioning unit in one of those locations. Uh, the location that they have put it on the south side would be considered one of the front yards, which is what they're seeking a variance for. On the front side of the building, there were already some electrical boxes uh, placed there by DTE. Uh, so I guess with, when choosing one of the front yards to put it in, I think that's the logical choice because there's already some other utility type items like that in the front yard. Uh, unfortunately, this one is located is is placed already and, and built already 
Uh, typically, you know, people would come and seek these variances prior to actually building it. Uh, so this is not the ideal way to go about it. Uh, but that is the situation with this one. Very good, Mr. Box. Uh, I believe we have um, a petitioner in the audience. I think we also had somebody uh, uh, in support of the petitioner, I believe a mechanical uh, contractor. Uh, if a petitioner could state their name and address for the record uh, and give any comments that they might have. Uh, yes, this is David Smith. Uh, I represent uh, Century Plastics CI USA. I am the maintenance manager there. Uh, uh, my address is 2513 John L. in Port Huron, Michigan. Uh, yes, we uh, we had placed this uh, unit there, not realizing that there was an ordinance, uh, as was explained by Mr. Box. Uh, you know, we were to stay away from the parking lot to uh, avoid uh, a variance there with removing parking spots. And uh, also, as he stated, the there is a drive to the west side of the building, the rear of the building. So, uh, as he stated, unknowingly, we uh, placed this AC unit uh, to the south side of the building, which uh, faces Angelo Drive. Uh, I do have Ron Sykes. He's our uh, representative from Home Mechanical, uh, also in line with us. And uh, I think he has some of the technical drawings, if there's anything we want to look at there. Uh, as far as where this sits, I, and I also have some uh, pictures of this unit. Uh, as Mr. Box stated, uh, we logically located this near the uh, the uh, transformer for Edison, thinking you know this was a you know uh, a good area to put it, being that it was already there. And like I said, unknowing that there was an ordinance that this would be uh, considered a front yard, we were assuming that it would excuse me be considered the side yard since the uh, the offices in front of the building face Padre Drive. Very good, thank you. Do uh, any of the board members have any questions for the petitioner? Chairman Tuckfield, I have a question. Um, in the one of the findings in our packet, it indicates that um, no indication of improved screening conditions through the means of landscaping features or fencing has been presented as part of this variance request. Um, can the petitioner explain, since it would be located in the front, do they have any plans to add some type of screening or screening or landscaping features just to improve upon it aesthetically? Oh, yes. Actually, that was a discussion between myself and our contractor to improve this area, and we're definitely open to that. And uh, uh, we were kind of waiting to till we approach the board to see if there was any uh, recommendations, if there's anything that they would rather see before we just put up a fence or you know uh, some shrubs or something like that if there's anything in particular that would be more appealing to that area okay yep. thank you i'm glad you're open to that that's all i have chairman very good thank you any other questions for the petitioner no chris you actually beat me to that question <laughs> here i come mr piper <laughs> All right, uh, hearing uh, no other questions, I'm going to open this up to the public unless, uh, unless uh, Mr. Maples, I just I don't want to call you out, but I noticed that uh, you, you might want to say something. Did you, have, did you have something you want to interject? Yes, I was just wondering why um, a permit was not applied for before you even thought about placing it. Any mechanical contractor knows that any pieces of cooling equipment requires a permit. And at that point, we could have uh, alleviated this and possibly even gone with a rooftop unit, which is another um, yeah. option that was not even explained or um, looked at. Uh, to the petitioner, you have any, any and, and just so we have everybody identified, uh, that was Mr. Maples, who's the township uh, building official. Do you have any, uh, any comments on that? Actually, I was wondering, uh, Ron Sykes from McComb Mechanical, I was, but maybe you could help us there. I know that we had contacted you, and I don't, I'm not sure of the, of all the correspondence that he had with the township. I don't know if you, can you help us out, Ron, a little bit, uh, where that, how that led to where we are at. Hello, Ron. 
take it off mute. Uh, actually, I'm telling Ron he needed to make sure he came off mute, and I was on mute. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Sykes, if you could, I uh, believe you're muted at the moment. Uh, if you can unmute your phone or your computer uh, so that we can hear you, uh, make sure you give any comments you might have. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, I'm sorry. I was using my keyboard, but I need to use the screen. It's no problem. I was I was mentioning to you to unmute yourself, and then I realized I was muted myself. So the joys of uh, meetings in, in 2020. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Ron Sykes. I'm with Macomb Mechanical. I'm a sales engineer with them, and uh, I live at 8952 Field Road in Algonac, Michigan. And the process that we went through on this, um, as stated in the, the description when we were applying, uh, we were kind of limited on the locations we could put this unit because of parking lot, front yard, and rear yard uh, abilities. And because DTE was sitting on the side, we kind of thought that that was the obvious place to put this unit. Uh, we did look at going up on the unit or putting the unit up on the roof. Um, because the building structural support isn't, uh, would, would have to be modified considerably. Um, we kind of made the judgment call with, uh, with CIE that, again, we thought this was the location that would work best for them. Uh, we did kind of go through the process with the, the building owner and kind of mentioned to him what we were looking to do. And we did file permit. We didn't file a building permit. We filed mechanical permit to us. Um, permits, I'm not sure if we actually filed a sketch with that permit. I apologize. But we did put a description of what we were doing at that time. Um, were you, if you could, were you, do, you have a, do you have an issued permit? Do you have a permit ID or anything of that nature? I do. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Maple, did you have, sorry, go mechanic, ahead, Mr. Sykes. Mechanical permit number PM191133. They, they, do, they do have a permit, and I think it was, um, I, I don't have it in front of me right at the moment, but I believe it was just for an air conditioning unit. They uh, didn't indicate the large size of it. Um, it could be when they apply for these, it could be as small as a residential. Um, this one happens to be quite large, probably at least six feet by 20 feet, I would believe. I'm not sure of the exact location, um, one of the applicants can um, probably give us the details on that. Um, okay. So our mechanical permits are usually issued um, residentially, you know, over the counter, or you can do it online without a, um, a, a sketch, uh, but typically a commercial project uh, we we have layouts for those including any possible duct work that may be associated with it and in this case we also need an additional building permit because they cut through the exterior masonry wall uh, without any uh, permits so we will at least have to get an additional permit for that okay um dimensionally the unit is large it's yeah it's a it's a 40 ton ac only unit manufactured by train company it's eight feet wide and i cannot read the dimension on this sketch i apologize but it's about 12 feet long i mean i, I think sits, mr I think, Mr. Sykes, that that for for this for the nature of this conversation, you're more than welcome to continue if if you if you'd like to. But as far as it it being applicable for a permit, I think uh, Mr. Maple's uh, question was more general, uh, why it wasn't um, uh, applied for um, in what would be normal for a uh, industrial unit. Um, it does have some bearing on this conversation, although um, part of our job will be to determine whether or not, regardless of when it was installed, if it has a practical difficulty. Although for, for the petitioner, typically um, it being installed it does not 
make it more likely to be granted or less. Um, it, but it is it is notable that it, this probably could have been avoided if if the if the typical permitting process had been followed, which it sounds like it didn't. So it, you're you're more than welcome to continue. I just want to make sure we don't get into a, a conversation trying to apply for a building permit because that won't be the the correct uh, the correct avenue uh, at this point. Okay, understood. I, I provided the sketches within the packet and the application was made by someone in my office that does applications and um, I, I, can't, uh, I can't explain why they either chose the correct means or wrong means, but uh, I was not involved in that application process in, initially. So okay, I but can you, apologize you, and you, I guess at this point, tell us what we need to do and we'll make correct actions or apply for the additional permits. Very good. And, and Mr. Maples, just to, to, to circle back from, from your end, regardless uh, of if a, if, if a variance was to be given for this location tonight, this individual, the, the applicant and their contractor, they do need to apply for a building permit. Would, do they need to, would they need to also apply or, or, or amend their existing mechanical permit? Yes, um, the building permit would be required. Um, I think we may have to amend uh, possibly some ductwork. I don't have the application in front of me because they brought some ductwork from the unit on the outside through the exterior wall to the inside. Um, we have been out there to do some inspections, uh, but we could not final it out um, because of the lack of the building permit and the, also the location. I think the installation um, would meet code requirements if it does, if the board chooses, chooses to grant the variance it, with just some minor tweaks to it. Very good. And, and obviously that's, that's something that will be handled as part of the permitting process from your office. Uh, our, our part of this would be whether or not um, they are granted the variance to put it in that location, not if it's appropriately installed or if it's completed. Um, I do have a question for you, uh, Mr. Maples, and that will be with regards to the to the rooftop unit. And Mr. Sykes, uh, once Mr. Maples is done, I, I, if you can chime in on this as well, I, I know you mentioned it. Um, uh, to me, that the if if we ignore the fact that it's been installed and we just look at whether there's a practical difficulty here, uh, obviously the on the non frontage portions of this property, there's relatively little room, as was mentioned. It's it's mostly parking lot, and and, and judging by the size of the building, the, the parking spots are pretty uh, closely tailored to the size. Um, you mentioned rooftop units. Um, do you, is, is there something to what he's saying in, in a lack of capacity to put a rooftop unit? Is that something you're comfortable discussing or would you need to more information to be able to determine that? Um, this size of unit and the um, current structure, um, I haven't reviewed the plans, uh, but most of the time it would probably need some additional structural support to hold a unit this big. Now there are options of putting two smaller units that may have been a option when they um, would have applied for, but this particular one would definitely need um, additional support for structural on this. So you, you believe it'd be, it would be fair to say that if they were to put this on the roof, it would, it would require structural modification, that unit, it would require structural modifications to the building. That, that is correct, yes. Okay, and then Mr. Sykes, if, if you could chime in on this as well, what, if, if you could just briefly, what, what, would, what would that look like in, in something a layman might, might understand as far as what it would require? Um, it would be the uh, initially getting a structural steel engineer involved. Um, do an evaluation on the structure itself, um, the weight of the unit, they would try to come up with a location that did not interfere obviously with their process, which was one of the considerations of the location of this unit. We were trying to keep it away from their process yet provide cooling into the center of what C appeared to be. And I, from what it sounds like, it's doing a good job of keeping the heat load of the equipment in that area under, under manageable conditions for the occupants. Uh, but once the structural steel was evaluated, then modifications would have to be made. Um, I don't know that those modifications would be inside the building or if they'd have to take place on the roof. Um, but just, uh, and I'm, I can't, I, I honestly cannot in my uh, best judgment reflect on what the cost would be or how much steel would be involved. But it was uh, a guess that that was going to be a much more uh, considerable burden on the owner 
uh, instead of the location that we chose and putting on the, uh, it's an eight, an eight inch concrete reinforced pad. So. Very good. And, and I appreciate it. And, and the cost of it, um, the, 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 the vagaries of, of the practical difficulty, the, the cost is probably less important per se than the, than, than the action itself. Okay. Um, that being said, is there anyone from the board uh, who uh, wishes to ask any more questions before I take this to the public? Uh, hearing none, I'm going to take it to the public this now. I think I was going to before and I did not. Um, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? If you do, uh, please raise your hand digitally by hitting star nine if you're on a phone or if you're on a computer, please hit the hand sign uh, to raise your hand to indicate that you wish to speak. And I do this in person. It's a little easier uh, when I'm online because I can see it. But we only have two people uh, who are in attendance, so I'm going to give you another uh, another couple seconds here. If I don't uh, if I don't see a hand, I'm going to move on. All right, very good. Uh, no one uh, looks like they wish to speak from the public, so I'm going to close that portion and bring this back to the board. Any comments or questions on this item from the board? Uh, hearing none, I do have a comment. Um, um, I, I find myself uh, in support of the practical difficulty for this item, um, but I, I want to make sure that it's clear um, somewhat to the petitioner, but just as a, as a general basis, that practical difficulties being found do not necessarily, in, uh, are, if, if we recognize one and grant a variance, it is not meant to encourage um, installing uh, uh, things that require permits without them. It's, it's sort of a different uh, uh, timeline for us. We don't necessarily look at the permits or not, but, but as a whole, um, obviously the township requires permits. That's Mr. Maple's uh, office's job and, and it's done for safety. So um, I, I'm support in, in support of the a variance that would allow this air conditioner to be installed to locate this location, but I wanna make sure it's understood that I'm also in support of permits being pulled and one does not uh, equal that I do not support the other. And I want to make sure the petitioner knows that and other people who are listening know that this is this would not be granted um, um, out of pity. It's granted because there is a practical difficulty and, and people need to know that it's not good to uh, ask for forgiveness instead of permission. So all that said, I do support this. I believe there's a practical difficulty with regards to the space available on the lot and the fact that the building would need to be structurally modified in order to put it on the roof. Um, and I will bring it back to the board for any comments, questions, or motions. This is Member Piper. Uh, I, I just want to uh, mention that this would be a no brainer for me if they had followed the permitting process. I also see a practical difficulty, but I do have a reservation on it because of the fact that the process was bypassed. Thank you, Mr. Piper. And, and actually, I should I should mention one more thing, and, and this will be to Mr. Box. Uh, the petitioner did uh, indicate that they might be open to um, doing some screening. Um, if the board was to grant a variance in this in this regard, uh, with regard to the location in, in the front yard for an air conditioner, what would your recommendations be um, as far as comments about screening? Would you recommend specific screening? Should we would we leave it variable and have leave that up to your office? What would your recommendation be? As far as what type of screening? Or as far as how we encompass it in a motion. Would you recommend we say uh, requiring screening or requiring screening for, for the planning department or, you know, a, an eight foot arborvitae wall? What would you think we would do in that regard? Uh, I think you can include your, or make your variance contingent on them screening it. Uh, I would be fine with an arborvitae wall uh, or being that it's, it's not a residential neighborhood, but that of an industrial uh, neighborhood probably some, some paneled fencing would be sufficient as well. Either one I think would be okay. So maybe maybe um, fencing um, approved by the planning director uh, for, the, for the installation? Yeah, and I would, I would say though, actually now that I'm, I'm thinking about it a little bit more, it sounds like this unit, I think they mentioned it was eight, was it eight feet tall. Uh, I'm not sure what fencing eight feet tall would look like. It might be more appropriate for arborvitae. Okay. 
All right, and I will leave that if someone wishes, if someone wants to make the motion uh, to approve, I will uh, put that out there as general information and leave that to the person uh, making the motion and how they, how they want to handle it. Uh, with that, I would bring it back to the board for uh, comments or motions. I will, uh, this is Member DeFoster. I will uh, make a motion to allow the variance for the air conditioner to be placed in the front yard uh, due to the practical difficulty of the other sides of the building uh, being parking lots and drive lanes. Um, that being said, I would make this variance contingent upon screening that is approved by the planning department. Motion by Mr. Coster, is there support? Uh, Member Slauson will support. Supported by Ms. Slauson. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Box, are you okay with that? Uh, that wording, are you good with that, the way, the way we have that worded? Yes. Okay. And just to be clear, based on uh, what Mr. Maple said, there there's also some other additional permits that they will likely need to complete as well. Correct. And as I said, this this does not grant does not grant permit approval, does not grant permit acceptance, um, and it does not condone installing mechanicals without a permit. So that, that's something that they're going to have to handle with the building department, and it's the building department's. Um, procedure and, and discretion on how they're um, approving permits uh, um, with regards to the installation itself. All right, uh, I'm going to call the roll. Uh, Member DeCoster? Yes. Member Slauson? Yes. And I'm going to switch here midstream and go to Mr. and Miss, Mr. and Miss. Uh, Mr. Piper? Yes. Miss Posey? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. That vote passes five to nothing. Uh, that variance request has been approved. Thank you for coming in, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maples, as well, uh, for your help on this issue. All You're right. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Maples. Um, the next item is item 7A. Um, this is uh, the request with regards to the wall uh, by the medical building on Hall Road. Uh, Mr. Box, I think you had some correspondence on this this morning. Could you share that with the board, please? Yes, they uh, precision surgery has been working with uh, the residential neighbors on North Branch and Denwith, uh, and they are asking to uh, remove this uh, variance request as they will no longer need it based on what they're going to be doing as far as the wall. Very good. And, and Mr. Assorti, I know we talked about this briefly before the meeting, but the appropriate path would be to, if, if we wanted to accept this, uh, would be to make a motion to accept um, the withdrawal of this variance request. Is there any specific wording that should be used? No, just so that you acknowledge you get, that uh, Mr. Fox presented the, um, you know, that the, the request was made to him directly and that um, it's being made, you know, that they want it withdrawn and that um, you have it on the agenda and removing it at their request. So the motion would be removing, removing this item at the petitioner's request uh, in uh, conversation with Mr. Box this morning. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Assorti. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion uh, to accept the petitioner's request to withdraw this variance. Mr. Member Piper, I would move that we remove item 7A uh, per the, per the uh, petitioner's request uh, based on his conversation with Mr. Box this morning. Very good. Uh, and uh, that'll be a motion by Mr. Piper. Is there support? Member Slauson will support. Support by Ms. Slauson. And then before we go to the vote, Mr. Assorti, you're okay with that, that language? I think it might still be muted. Yes, that's fine. Okay, very good. I'm going to call the roll then. Mr. Piper? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Ms. Posey? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Tacoster? Yes. That motion passes 5 nothing. Okay, very good. Uh, that moves us on to item 8, which is public comments. Uh, we have two members of the public in the audience tonight. Would either of them wish to make a comment this evening? If you would, please hit star 9 on your phone or uh, hit the hand button on the app so that you can indicate you'd like to speak.
And seeing no hands raised, I'm going to um, move on from the public comments to ZBA member comments. Are there any members of the ZBA who would wish to speak? Hearing none, I have a few comments. Um, one brief update, uh, Mr. Uh, DeCoster, you mentioned, I think it was at the last meeting, uh, looking into potentially different ways of holding meetings. Um, I've had some conversations since then, um, and uh, we're not really ready to move forward yet, but I would just want to make the, the board aware that there have been conversations. Um, I believe that the Board of Trustees uh, at a recent meeting uh, had a similar uh, comments about seeing other ways to, uh, to handle meetings. Um, and at this point, I've kind of looked into our options, but I think it's best, particularly the, the Board of Trustees being the, the legislative body, we're going to let them make their move and, and see how they handle it um, and, uh, and take our direction from them. So I uh, believe we may um, hear something back in the, in the near future. It was brought up at one of the board meetings, and, and at this point, we're going, to, uh, we're going to wait for them to give us some direction um, and, and see how they want to handle it. So uh, that was the first thing. Um, the second thing is that I wanted to mention that we are getting closer to um, working on the master plan. Obviously, um, uh, the ZBA doesn't have as much um, direct input on some of these issues as the Planning Commission does, but uh, the ZBA does do the important job of, of um, enforcing the ordinance along with, uh, with, along with Mr. Maples and Mr. Box uh, that, that is driven by the master plan. So I think it's important that we understand the process and, and and also um, understand it as, as residents as well. So um, uh, just to that end, um, Mr. Skirto uh, has been working with Mr. Box and they've gotten some of the um, the pre-work done. They've, they've been doing some surveys and some reports um, and they shared with the Planning Commission on Tuesday that there's going to be a number of um, uh, workshops and uh, seminars, if you will. I believe there was uh, seven of them. Uh, they have set up the topics for them. Some of those seminars uh, and, and workshops are going to be um, some open forums so that the residents will have a, a pretty clear line of being able to speak. Some of them are going to be a little bit more um, uh, formal with, with a group of panelists and, and some, some presentations. Uh, but that interaction should be something that we start uh, seeing dates and times for shortly. And, and I would encourage you uh, just to, to uh, watch for it and to... Uh, listen in and to take part in it as as you can i think it's going to be interesting and i think it's going to be helpful uh, for everybody uh, to be involved with it um, past that uh, i think there's there's going to be a lot more things that are going to be done but that's kind of I, I think the first one of the first public steps that is going to be happening and i again i just want to make you guys aware of it and also encourage you uh, to take part of it as you're able i think those were all of Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. I know it's past the ZBA member comments, and this has nothing to do with the ZBA, but I would like to point out that on September 19th, uh, the Historical Commission is going to have a book signing event with okay. a local author who has did a pictorial book on the history of Macomb Township. So I just want to let people know that it's going to be at the Wade property where the original Township Hall is located, and the Building and Grounds Department has actually done a fantastic job so far of uh, restoring that building. It's got a long way to go, but they're really doing a good job. But I just want to let people know that Saturday, September 19th from 10 to 1, the reason I'm mentioning that is because the supervisor's office put out a thing on Facebook saying 10 to 2. So it's only 10 to 1, but there's going to be a meet and greet with the author where she's going to sign copies of books and recommend anybody coming and joining us and seeing the Wade property. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Piper. Really appreciate that. Uh, any other comments from the ZBA members? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question um, regarding um, you talking about the master plan and, and reviewing it and the seven seminars and things like that. And obviously, I'm going to guess the communication will be through email, um, or is there any other way? I mean, in our, I know in, in the past, it's kind of varied the way they've run the meetings. Um, sometimes all of the boards are included, or, you know, and there's input from all the boards. And I know, obviously, things are different now with things being remote and all that. Is there any plan of how, I mean, if it, it's going to be just online, is it going to be through emails and just people can just join and there'll be people just talking or will there be like the boards, you know, be giving interaction and, and their input or, or do they not even know how that's going to look yet? Um, I would defer at least to some extent to Mr. Box on this, but I would, I would tell you um, that the, as far as I'm aware, the uh, seminars and, and, and public groups are, are, are generally a public event. There's going to be some people invited to be panelists, but um, I think 
most of our participation in that would be um, as, as public or, or I'll probably be there uh, because of the planning commission, but, but you're welcome to join it. And there's nothing, there's nothing that requires you, but, but conversely, there's nothing that would stop you. And I, I have no problem. Those are all going to be public events. And I'm going to be trying to make sure I, I help advertise them to some extent. And, and I would be happy to send the ZBA uh, as a whole, um, any updates to those, for example, uh, by email as soon as I get it. So um, as far as other participation, I'm not sure that there is, specifically formal participation by the ZBA. Obviously, I think everybody would be interested in comments from the ZBA because it's 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 um, closer involved than other things, but I, I would defer to Mr. Box if, if he's expecting any further uh, formal um, participation by, by members of the ZBA. Mr. Mr. Box, do you have anything you want to add on that? Yeah, so as you mentioned, we do have, I think it's seven areas. Uh, three of them are, are more so designed for the general public to weigh in. We have analysts um, that will go through some presentations uh, for their subject areas uh, and then allow the general public to ask questions or, or give comments uh, and, and the, the ZBA and, and the trustees and, and planning commission are all encouraged to participate as well. Um, the other meetings will be more specific uh, to uh, a couple different items. One, we're, we're having uh, kind of a panel and a roundtable discussion with some of the area developers, um, one with uh, some property owners in some of the undeveloped areas uh, in the township, uh, and a few others. We're, again, those are more topic-specific discussions. Um, at this point, we are not intending those to necessarily be um, public facing interaction, uh, but we could certainly do that if, if everyone felt that that was uh, desirable. Um, I will say some of the group, however, um, I think will be reluctant to be as open. If mm. They know that there's hundreds, you know, potentially hundreds of people listening in uh, and we're, we're trying to get them to be as, as possible, so as, especially the developers. Uh, we want to hear, uh, you know, as what they're seeing, what they're interested in, uh, and, and how we can uh, use their their expertise to further develop the township in a manner that we, we want. Um, all of these are, at this point, given the circumstances, are intended to be Zoom-type meetings, similar to the one we're on right now. Um, if things change, obviously, it has to change on the fly as well. So, Mr. Box, if I, I could, and, and my, my apologies, I, I think I, I miss uh, I miscommunicated what they were because I think I was mistaken. So, so that I understand, you have, we have the three that that were were considered public. How are we? How are you planning on handling the other four? Is it going to be by a committee of the planning commission? Is it is it is it going to be um, the, just the planning director and and uh, the planning consultant and those individuals, or how are you how are you looking at holding those if they're not going to be as as public facing? Um, so we do have a, a list of, of a few individuals, and, and that's actually one of the reasons that we haven't specifically lined up dates yet. Uh, but we have some people that would represent uh, the planning commission, the ZBA, and the board of trustees. Um, we have to be careful who we invite and how many. However, we don't want any of those boards to meet. Excellent. We have quorum if we're not being public. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, because we haven't approached everyone yet, and and that's why we haven't locked down dates or made anything. Uh, okay. Well, my apologies for misspeaking on that. I had, I had misunderstood. Uh, I had misunderstood what the goal was, but thanks for for uh, clarifying that. I appreciate it. Did you have Did you have anything else on that, Miss Lawson? Did we Did we Did uh, we kind of combine the answer for your questions? Do you have anything else there? I think I'm I'm good. <laughs> I, okay. and, and maybe you won't know the. Answer question obviously with having a new supervisor coming in and new leadership in that I know in the past like there's been like a there was a, a meeting where all the boards were brought together and I can't remember if that came from the supervisor's office or if that came from the planning I but I just remember that we kind of all gathered and kind of all got on the same page and there was a lot of communication to somebody I just didn't know if there was something like that in the works or maybe I was misunderstanding when you're talking about the master plan maybe I'm kind of confusing it all too so I was just wanting to make sure we're kind of in the loop of what was going on as far as communication goes. So, especially with us all being remote at this point. 
Sounds good. It sounds like I, I may I may have hindered communication there, not helped it. My apologies. I, I will say that that joint meeting, and, and Josh might not be aware of that, I think that's something that the planning department and the supervisor's office did together. And, and Josh, for, for, your, for your benefit, uh, it was something that was done uh, several times over the past, uh, I'd say, six, seven years, uh, where the, the Board of Trustees, the Planning Commission, and the ZBA would gather at one joint meeting, and we'd have a variety of speakers just talking about um, things ongoing with regards to planning for the township. It was kind of a, uh, a combination meeting to, to keep both everybody on the same page and, and make sure uh, everybody was interfacing well. So I think people generally found it helpful. I know I did, um, but obviously that's that's going to be uh, something that's that's up to you and uh, and uh, the supervisor uh, currently and then the, the, the future supervisor to, to deal with. But just be aware it is something that we have done in the past. I think the last one was about May or June of last year, if I remember correctly, Aaron. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, but. but I'm okay. Not, I'm not. Um, I'm not opposed to that whatsoever. In fact, I think that that's likely something we will engage in uh, when we get a little bit further al along in the process. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, Mr. Skirto and, and his firm have been doing some of the background work with demographics and and socioeconomic data, um, you know, the stuff that you could get from census type data. And now these uh, upcoming public engagement sessions are to, to kind of pull further data, uh, you know, the needs and the wants of, of the residents and, and others in the community. Uh, and then at a later stage, once we start to formulate some ideas of what we want uh, the master plan to, to show, that's when I think it would be more appropriate to bring all the boards together. Okay, very good. All right, uh, any other comments or questions from the, from the members? Hearing none, I'm gonna go on to item 10, which would be planning director's comments. Mr. Box, do you have anything for us this evening? Well, I think most of it was already discussed with regards to the planning uh, or the master plan, uh, but I, I will mention, um, this will be confirmed tomorrow, but at this time, it's looking like there likely will not be an October uh, ZBA based on lack of uh, items. items. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it, Mr. Box. Um, and our next item is a, uh, adjournment. But before uh, we get to that, I just want to thank uh, all the board members uh, and all the members of the staff, uh, Ryan. Um, Josh, Tom, Joe, uh, appreciate all you guys being here and, and helping us through this um, and uh, everyone who was able to, to come and speak and, and who observed. I think we're down to uh, we're down to one member of the public. Uh, so I want to thank uh, thank that, that uh, individual for being out there. And uh, with that, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Member Posey makes a motion to adjourn. Um, a, a motion by Member Posey, uh, support by uh, Member Slauson. Uh, I'm going to call the roll. Member Posey? Yes. Uh, Member Slauson? Yes. Uh, Mr. Coster? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. We 5-0. We stand adjourned at 8.08 .08 p.m. Thank you, everyone.